Welcome back to episode seven of Tiffany Teaches Mice and Mystics Painting. Today we're painting Lily and Magos, Mag Magnos, Mag Magnos. I just, there is one character in each of these episodes that I just can't say the name. But today we're painting Lily and Magnos, the archer and the wizard. I paired these two characters together because they have a similar fur color and they also have kind of a similar paint scheme in regards to their clothing. And these two are pretty similar to the last two figures we painted, Ness and Flitch, in their fur color and kind of their clothing color. So the colors that you'll need for these two figures are pretty similar. The only new colors in this set in particular would be the red and the dark brown and we need those colors for the clothing items and you'll see why as we get into it all right but we now have three shades of brown because this game loves its browns and we also will have if you notice two shades of gray you need light gray that that's the other new one sorry forgot about that sorry we're gonna jump right into this episode because I assume you've been painting along this entire time. If you haven't, at least go back and watch the Nez and Flitch episode so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Thin paints and layers and building up highlights and stuff like that. Let's get to it. First up, fur. And we're gonna start with Lily's fur. Lily's fur is very similar in color to Ness's and Flitch's fur. So we're just gonna be using our medium gray thinned to the normal amount all on Lily's fur. Lily doesn't actually have a lot of her fur exposed. She mostly just has her arms, her legs, her groin area, her face, and her tail. And her tail is very similar to Flitch's tail, where it is on the inside of the back of her cloak. So you wanna make sure you don't forget that part. And then it's just peeking out just a little bit on the outside of the cloak on the back side of the figure. So make sure you get the tail, all of her hands, all of her feet, all of her toes, the behind her ears, I forgot that on one figure. Behind the ears, through the hood, that's important to remember. And you also wanna make sure there's a little tiny, little tiny bit of fur, which is between her sleeve and her like leather cuff, her like arrow guard leather cuff, just a little tiny bit of fur that you can see. And for me, I just took my fine tip brush and did like a very thin layer in there, not wearing too much. Um, but if you want to skip it and let the wash carry it, that's fine. I just added a little bit of gray so it was the right, like, tone for shadow in between those two clothing items. And that's Lily's fur. Let's talk Magnos's. So Magnos is a little lighter in color. So I actually started painting Magnos's skin or fur color with a light gray color, which for me was Celestia Gray from Citadel's. I thinned it my usual amount, which for Citadels is a little bit more water than for Reaper paints. And then I just went ahead and painted all of Magnus' fur area. Similar to Lily, he doesn't have a lot because he have those, he has that big robe tunic thing on. I guess it's not a tunic, it's, it's robes. But his feet are sticking out a little bit. He's got his hands. His one hand, you might think he's holding something. He's actually like doing this with his fingers. Maybe it's... He has three fingers. So he's kind of doing this with his fingers on his right hand. So just go ahead and paint the entirety of his right hand from his robe outward. He also has his tail poking out the back of his robes holding a scroll. Try to be very careful and not get any paint on this scroll through this entire painting process. The goal for this scroll, it's gonna be tricky, I know, is to keep it white because we primed these figures white and I don't want to have to go back and paint it white. You can if you need to, but the goal is to keep it white and then when we do the wash, the wash will bring it to like a muddied brown, kind of like an aged parchment, parchment look without us having to do anything, which is great, except for you have to try to avoid painting it. If you do end up painting it at any point in this painting process, you can, if you can't get the paint off really quickly using water, that's fine. Just before the wash, apply a layer of white so it looks good again and then don't worry about it, all right? There's not really any tricky areas on Maganos aside from his tail wrapped around the scroll because it's really just his hands, his face, his tail, and his toes. So that was really easy. Yay! And now we're gonna move on to their clothing, which is a lot of brown paint, lots of brown paint on these figures. For Lily's tunic, I did a base color of a light brown, which for me was leather brown from Reaper's Minis. And I thinned it my normal amount. I'm just gonna be saying that a lot. And I painted the tunic. I painted her sleeves 
originally the leather brown and then I decided it was more like her sleeves were like a different shirt and so I painted her sleeves a different color in the future so you can paint them the light brown if you want or you can just not paint the sleeves if you want and just w paint it like it's a vest thing. So you're mostly just gonna be painting her tunic the leather brown color and then her quiver on the back. Her quiver has some like leather straps along the bottom, the top, and the middle, which is like holding it to her. And I painted not those parts leather brown. So like the flat square part, which is like the main encasement area for her arrows is what I painted the leather brown. The details on the top and the bottom and the middle will paint a darker brown here in the future. The future is almost here. First, let's paint Magnus. So with Magnus, we're gonna paint his robes a slightly darker brown using a medium brown, which for me was harvest brown. Thinned it my normal amount and then painted his robes, which is like the entirety of him. He does have a very nice thick belt on, don't paint that. And then there's a little bit of trim on the like front side of his cloak from where it like wraps, you know? Don't paint that if that makes sense. If you do paint it, it's not a big deal. Seriously, don't worry about it. But um, if you can, try not to paint that like strip that's on the front edge of his robe. This robe has a hood and we know that because it's like down like a hoodie. Um, try and paint the hoodie as good as you can without getting any on his face. If you get it on his face, try and pull it off really quickly. Or if you need to go back and paint Celestia like light gray on it again, that's fine. You can fix that. We can fix anything. Now we're gonna do a third brown, which is a dark brown, which for me was Murfang Brown from Citadel Paints. And we're gonna paint all of the leather bits on both of these figures. For Lily, that means we're gonna paint her belt and the front quiver strap that she has, yeah? Also her leather wrist guard on her left arm. Yeah, left arm, I got it this time. Ah, those trim pieces that I was talking about on the quiver of Lily's quiver with this brown. So just the middle strap in the middle of the quiver and then the, like the top and bottom. In addition, you're gonna paint her arrow shafts. So there's some arrows sticking out of her quiver with the shafts. You're just gonna paint the shafts, not the fletches, the, the feathery bits of the arrows, just the shafts, this darker brown. And I also went ahead and painted her bow this darker brown as well. You want to make sure when painting all of these things you don't have too much paint and you don't let it pool too much because you'll lose the detail and definition between the arrows or the wood grain on the bow so just try and be careful there's also some like nice lacing detail on the cuff there's a lot of great detail in these figures and you just want to try and be as careful as you can to not lose it with putting in too much paint which is why i use thin layers and if i need to bring the paint up a level i will paint additional layers on top in general, I'm painting anywhere between two and three layers of these colors in all of these areas that I'm telling you to paint. It's not like I just paint it once and it's the color I want. I'm using thin layers so that I can be more precise and if I screw up, I'm not that screwed. So I'll paint thin layers a couple of times, just alternating between the two figures as I paint. Speaking of alternating between the figures, on Magnus with this color, we're gonna paint his nice big thick belt and his pouch and we're gonna paint his staff with this darker brown color. Also, this is a decision point and it's entirely up to you. If you wanna paint the sleeves of Lily's shirt a different color, I used Murfang Brown for the shirt sleeves. Then I went ahead and freehanded the stripes on the front of Lily's tunic to create the diamond pattern. I simply just painted lines going diagonally one direction and then carefully went the opposite direction after a second. Let's get away from brown. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add some red to some areas to give a little pop of color for these characters. So on Lily, I used red, which for me was Mephiston red from Citadels, to paint the fletches on her arrows. Give them a nice little pop. For Magnus, that front strip on his robe, I painted that red because that's supposed to be a red trim um, from the character art. Also in the character art, all of his hymns are actually red. So he's got that red strip on his sleeve openings, on the bottom hem of his robes, but they're not defined in the sculpt. So I went ahead and used my fine tip brush and did several layers of red around all of the hymns of Maganos' robes, just as like an extra added detail. 
Speaking of nice little details, Magnus's ladybug. He's got a little ladybug sitting on his shoulder and I used this red paint to paint the ladybug. Um, you don't do the ladybug's legs or his like, he, there's like a little face section of the ladybug. Don't paint those red. Uh, just paint the hard, bigger shell part red and to make sure that it was really bright red I painted it with several layers I think I did like four layers of red on this guy just because I had thinned my red that much now we're gonna do Lily's cloak and as you know from the flitches episode I love painting cloaks and these cloaks are fabulous so there's a reason there's a cloak in every episode of this continuing series so for Lily's cloak, we're just going to paint it green. For me, that was Viper Green from Reaper Minis. And I just thinned the paint via normal mount and applied coverage for all of Lily's cloak. Make sure that you get the outside of her cloak, the hood, the crevices around her face. Try to be very careful and not get it on her face. And you also want to make sure that you paint the inside of her robe down where her tail is and try to avoid her tail. There's a couple tricky areas with this cloak around her feet and the inside of the cloak. So her feet are such that the cloak isn't really wrapped around her, but it's just like beside her feet. On the right foot, it's pretty easy to paint that section, but on her left side, the cloak, the bow kind of gets in the way. So I used a thin brush and kind of just snuck the paintbrush in. Like if this is... If this is the, like, the bow, the bow and her clothing, I just like snuck the brush in and was just like to paint that section um, because I didn't want to get paint on her, the side of her bow or on her feet or anything like that. That's like the trickiest part of this Lily figure is just that one section where the bow kind of sticks it out. But if you have a smaller tip brush, you can actually just like, like I said, slip it in between the two parts of the sculpt and just use the side of the brush to paint. And you don't have to worry about being precise or detailed. Um, you're not like painting the Mona Lisa in there. You're just trying to splat some paint. <laughs> and as I've said in previous videos, if you don't get right up against the uh, her like leg or the tunic with the green, that's fine as long as you get close enough that the wash will figure will like cover up and do the blending for you. That's all you're looking for. All right, next up, you're gonna need a little bit of black paint to paint some of the details on Maganos. This is mostly just his ladybug, so just paint the little black legs on the ladybug and the face on the ladybug and the back legs of the ladybug. Make sure you don't forget the back like I did. I used my fine tip brush for this and then I also painted a little tiny heart on the top of the shell of the ladybug. I believe it's in one of the pictures of the rule book. You can't really see it on the character art I think but there's a more close-up picture of the ladybug and the ladybug his spots form a heart and so I went ahead and painted that heart on top of the ladybug and I did that just by painting half of it at a time as opposed to trying to do the entire shape. I just did one half and then I did the other half. So yeah. All that's left is the shiny bits. So I took my metallic gray, which for me was honed steel from Reaper's Minis, and I painted all the shiny bits. So for this, that means mostly the belt buckles. Both of these characters have big old belt buckles. And so I just used the technique where I use very little amount of paint and kind of the side of the brush to paint the raised top edges of the buckles. Lily also has a little clasp holding her cloak on. And I went ahead and just did a little circle of this metallic paint on her clasp because I like the clasp to be metallic and have like a little pop and some glint. And that's it for basing these figures. All of the base colors are done. You should have fully covered figures now, unless I've screwed up, um, with all of the colors that you want. And remember the scroll on the back of Maganos that his tail is holding, we're trying not to paint because it should be primed white. If you didn't prime your figure white, go ahead and grab some white paint and paint this white now. Um, if you screwed up and you got paint on it, that's fine. Just get some white paint and paint the scroll white. Now it's time for my favorite part, the wash. I don't know why I'm doing those with funny voices. I used Agrox Earthshade, which is my favorite wash, as we all know. It is the miracle worker of washes. And I used it for Lily entirely. So just cover Lily with this wash like cray. As always with a wash, you want to make sure that you get all of the nooks and crannies of the figures covered without having too much of the wash pool. You can use your brush to move it around as you need. You want to make sure on Lily, especially, you get the tough left side of her really well covered with this wash, okay? Then with Magnos, I actually did two washes with him, like how I did with Filch. 
So I did his robe, the Agrax Earthshade. That's what I used for washing the robe on Magnus. I also use Agrax Earthshade on Magnus's staff. And then I used a black wash for Magnus's fur and the ladybug. And I did this because Magnus is meant to be more of like a grayish, older colored rat. And so I felt that the brown wash would add too much of a brown tone to him. And because his fur is more like a lighter gray, uh, and he's meant to be even a little brighter than light gray, I wanted to make sure that the wash was in the gray color spectrum and not a brown color spectrum, which Agrax or Shade is. Time for highlights. So both of these characters, we're gonna do highlights very similar to Flitch's cloak that I did, um, but obviously with the colors that make sense for them. So for Lily, I used that green color that I had and I brought the color up a little bit on the shade of the green, I thinned it, and then I did the highlights and building up of color again on Lily's cloak, very similar to how I did Flitch's. So the idea here is that you want the lower part of the cloak folds to be darker in shade color, which the wash provided for us, but we want the upper areas of the, the upper folds on the cloaks to be a little brighter. I achieved that by mixing my green paint with yellow, actually, because green is made up of yellow and blue, and yellow is the brighter color. If you don't have yellow, that's fine. You can use white, just a little bit of white to bring the tone up on the green. Uh, I actually did that for two of the of the Lily figures I've painted because I've painted three sets now of these figures for this series. It was just that I happen to have yellow now and you might have yellow as well from painting earlier figures in the series. And so if you want, try mixing in a little yellow instead of white on this green for these highlights. As with the Flitch character, all that you really need are thin layers and lots of patience. So I went ahead and started building up layers on this cloak in the areas that I wanted to be a little brighter. And I painted, oh geez, anywhere from eight to 10 layers on this cloak, reducing how much I was painting with each additional layer. I actually believe some of the ridges, like the ones on her shoulder, and there's a really big fold on like her side, side slash back area, I think I probably went up with 12 layers on that one just to really bring the brightness up on that fold because I felt that it would catch the most light, especially from where she was drawing her bow, like where she had her bow out, if that makes sense. For Maganos, I did highlight buildups on his robes as well, focusing on the folds on the back and on the folds on the front where he's kind of like sweeped his leg out, if that sort of makes sense. You can kind of see how the fabric's folding. I didn't end up going as bright as I did on the Lily Cloak, and the colors that I used for Magnus was I used the medium brown, which we used to paint his fur, or his robes. I used the medium brown with the light brown mixed in to brighten it, and I got like a thin color that was somewhat closer to the medium brown, but you know, still had the, the light brown in there. Uh, and I did thin layers on those folds and highlights where I really wanted it to pop, painting a little less every time with each layer. For this, I actually really focused on his arm that's holding the staff, painting a lot of layers on that to almost bring that up to like a light brown color. And then I also painted, when his hood is folded, I painted the top edge, like the highest part of his hood that's folded. The I brought that up the brightest as well. In addition to, there's like one fold where his leg is like next to his staff. You can see it's under the robe. I brought that up the brightest as well, with the idea being that most players would have the figure kind of tilted to that direction. I also brought the highlights on his sleeve that has the ladybug that's pointing out up a little bit just on top of that arm. I think all in all for him, I painted around eight layers, eight to 10 layers as well. Just thin layers reducing as I went um, and just kind of like speaking to me in regards to where I wanted the eye and attention to be grabbed and where I think like light would be shining on this figure. The rest of the highlights for these figures are much simpler and mostly involve just bringing some colors up with quick, easy techniques. The first of which is I brought all the leather colors up a little bit with the Murfang Brown. So I just got a little bit of Murfang Brown, just a little bit, and just applied to the top of the leather belts, just the very higher parts of the leather belts to bring the color back up on all of the leather accents on both of these characters. So the straps, the belts, etc. I also took a little bit of this Murfang Brown and put it on my brush for dry brushing. So I made sure I didn't have much of this paint on my brush. And I just dry brushed both 
the bow for Lily and the staff for Maganos, just to bring the color up, but also to make sure that I didn't accidentally get in any of the wood grain. And that's why I dry brush is dry brushing versus painting the highlights is when you want to build up the color, both in the recesses and the upper levels, you can use like the thinned highlight layers. But if there's a lot of texture and you just want to get like the upper uppermost areas of the figure, not the low recesses of this textured area, you use dry brushing. Speaking of dry brushing, I also dry brushed a little bit of the light gray on Magnus's face just to bring his color back up. I also did a little bit of dry brushing on Lily's face and hands with the same light gray, and I mean like a little bit of dry brushing on Lily um, to bring up the definition on her knuckles while she's holding things. So do it on the hands, on her face, um, and also just like on the size of her legs and toes to help bring the appearance that there's actually light shining on her and some depth to the character's fur. And that's basically it for these figures, except for their ears, nose, and eyes. All of the heroes in the My Sigmestic series, I paint their ears and their noses pink and their eyes black. And you could paint all of the heroes' ears and eyes at the same time when they're all ready for that stage, but I like showing off the figures when they're as done as they can be. So I painted their ears and eyes and noses as I was painting each figure set individually. So I just went ahead and took pink, which for me was Emperor's children, uh, to do their ears and their adorable little noses. For the eyes, I just used a little bit of black paint, painting in circles very carefully with my fine tip brush on the eyeballs. As an added bonus, I went ahead and did a little dot of white as a glint in each character's eye by having a bright light behind me, looking at the figure and seeing where there actually was a glint being formed on the on top of the eyeballs, and just using my very, very, very fine pointed tip brush, which you can find a link to down below, to paint a little dot on each eyeball. And that's it for Magnus and Lily. I hope that you find this video helpful, and if you do, feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss the last episode in the series, which will be coming later this week. I'm kind of rushing these last three episodes for people that are painting along with the series to complete gifts for Christmas 2017 or the holiday 2017 period. There is the fact that the bases aren't done on these figures, I know. I'm painting all of the bases of all of my heroes all at once in the last episode of the series, so I only have to mix one batch of paint for all of these figures to ensure that all of their bases are the same color and it's a consistent, like, shade and etc. If you would like to paint your bases now, just go ahead and make a very clear and good note on what color mixture you're using if you want to paint all of the bases the same for your figures. If you're planning on painting along with the last and final episode where we paint Tildy and I think that I don't know how you pronounce the name, Tildy and Colin, these are the paints that you'll need for those figures. The only new paint here would be purple. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it's purple. I think. Um, <laughs> and that would be for Tilda's uh, hood. She has a hood and it's bright purple and it's awesome. And so, yeah. But and Tilda, Tilda is a very tricky figure because her robes are meant to be entirely white and painting white is complicated. We wanna make sure that we're gonna be adding some nice tone and depth with that figure. And so we're gonna be using the highlight technique. We wanna make sure that we add some nice tone and depth to the white robes without making it look entirely white. And so we're gonna be using the highlight technique that I've used for Magnus's robes and Lily's cloak and Flitch's cloak and Colin's cloak eventually, and we're gonna apply all of those skills to Tilda, which is actually like one of the hardest but easiest figures to paint. You'll be surprised at how much is involved in painting very nice white. It's about as much as what's involved in painting a very nice black, which, spoilers, painting a good black is actually all about painting like 87 different shades of gray. With white, it's the same. It's you're painting 87 different shades of gray into one figure so that they build up and look white. So yeah, you'll find out more in the last episode of the series, which will be coming later this week. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go finish my coffee.